what is up everybody welcome back to simply breeze my name is Bree. if you are new here and today we are getting back on to the topics of life skills i created this channel the inspiration for this channel was so that i could help others learn basic life skills that i was taught and also learned along the way after I became an adult, going into becoming an adult, and I continue to learn throughout my years, especially now that I'm 30. So today, I'm going to be kicking off a series of mine that I have been wanting to create for a little bit now. This series is life skills that everybody should know as they enter adulthood, and this is specifically targeted towards the new high school graduates and the new college graduates, because those are the two populations right now that I think could really benefit from this information. That is not to say that this information is only relevant to those two populations as well, okay? But that is my specific target right now because I want people to know how to be confident and enter adulthood with this information because it's going to help them out a lot as they enter college, enter the workforce, live on their own, move out of their parents' house, okay? So all of these things are important topics that I think are at least the minimum that you need to know now that you are an adult. So this video is going to be on money management. There's going to be several other videos in this series, but today's topic is money management. So let's break down what that means. So people assume that when they hear the word budget, it means they are all of a sudden restricted and they can't do anything with their money. People hear the word budget and freak out. And I've heard people say they're not smart enough to make a budget. I've heard people say they don't have time to make a budget. I've been told that somebody doesn't make enough money to have a budget. So let me just break that down for you none of that is true. You can make time just like you make time to either feed yourself, go hang out with friends, go get groceries, whatever. You can make time. It's whether or not you deem it a priority, number one. The second thing about a budget is it is only as restrictive as you make it. The point of a budget is to break down what you make, what you spend, that's it. That's all a budget is, is it's just letting you see the big picture so you know where your money's going and how you're using it. It's all a budget is. It is defined by you. The only thing that's not entirely defined by you could be your paycheck because that's defined by your work, but you can control that to an extent by getting a better job, picking up hours, stuff like that. The other thing about a budget is it doesn't care how much money you make. You can make $10 an hour, you can make $50 an hour. The budget doesn't care. The budget is gonna say, okay, this is how much money you have. These are your expenses. You're either overspending or you're spending less than you make, which is where you can then start saving, okay? That's all a budget is. It doesn't care how much money you make. It's just telling you what's going on, okay? So everybody needs to get on a budget. Everybody budgets just a little bit differently. There are tons of tools and resources out there. Please, please look into those resources because once I started tracking my money, my life got much easier in the sense I wasn't stressed whether or not I could afford something. If I would wanna go out with friends, I would make sure I would set some money aside to go out with them. I would set myself a cap, I'd pull it out in cash and I'd say, okay, tonight, I have $100, this is it. This is all I can spend once the money's gone, it's gone. But then that way I know I had the money on hand and it kept me from overspending, but I had a plan and that's, that's the purpose of it right there, okay? So please look into resources for a budget. I have a video on how to budget and how I set up my budget. I also mentioned in that video that I use the Dave Ramsey Every Dollar app because I love the way that it is set up. I'm not sponsored by Dave Ramsey. I'm not affiliated with Dave Ramsey because I do not participate in all of his practices. But 
I do really like his tool and I like a lot of his principles. So I'm telling you what I use. I will put a link in the description below so you know and you can look. The app is free. They have a paid version. I have only ever used the free version of the app and it has done wonders to helping me stay on track. You need to know what bills you need to pay. This kind of goes into a budget, but I'm, I'm giving this its own segment because it's important. You need to know what bills to, you have to cover. If you have rent, if you have a car payment, if you have insurance, if you have an internet payment, utilities, all of those things are important and they're pretty detrimental to your livelihood. You need to pay for food. So you need to make sure you can cover your bills. And I have met people who would rather go out and party and go out with friends and then come home and tell me, or actually I didn't come home, I knew them at a very old job of mine, they'd come back to me and say, oh, I don't have food for money today. Or I don't have money for food today. And I would ask them why, and they'd say, oh, I went out and I already spent it. I already spent my paycheck. I don't know where it went or what happened. I just now don't have money. And when I asked them about the route and we talked about it and I walked them through it to help them understand like where their money was going, they just didn't prioritize it. it was, was the ultimate thing. Now do not get me wrong, I'm gonna put a disclaimer here. There are people who just do not make a lot of money making minimum wage. I used to work minimum wage. I get it. But it's whether or not you deem certain things are important I prioritized feeding myself, I prioritized my rent, I prioritized electricity. So I prioritized certain things and I busted my rear end to make sure I could cover those basic necessities. But it relies on you to put the importance there. I made minimum wage and I fought my way. I used to dog sit all through college. That helped me out tremendously because then I can afford to go hang out with friends, but my bills were also still covered. Let me put another disclaimer here. I did live at home all through my undergrad. I lived at home until I graduated college with my bachelor's. I did pay my parents rent, and that was because they were trying to teach me the responsibility and the need to prioritize and learn to budget for those types of costs. Okay, it wasn't an astronomical amount. I paid practically nothing, especially in today's world. But the purpose was to teach me that I needed to prioritize my bills, okay? So I will put that disclaimer. However, when I lived on my own and I was in my graduate program, I still didn't make a whole lot of money and I busted my rear end. I would still dog sit every now and then but I busted my rear end to make sure I would prioritize and cover my bills. So you need to break down what your bills are. Next thing you need to do when it comes to money management is you need to look at your income. You need to figure out if you need to up your income, if you need to go get a second job. That is within your control. You need to look at yourself, Look at your lifestyle and figure out if you can afford to do all the things that you want to do or even just afford to live. It'll affect the way that you do things. So look at your income. Your income is going to make or break a lot of things. And food service, I'm not going to lie, I, food service had its perks. It was also at times one of the worst jobs I've ever had between the people I worked with and for, and some of the customers, I also met some really great people. But I'm, the reason I'm bringing this up is because right now, the food service industry has really upped their pay scales. And if you ever need to get a second job, look into the service industry. 
if you're looking for a second job, especially if you're trying to get out of debt or just make sure you're barely scraping by, it won't last forever. It is just temporary. So something to keep in mind. The next thing you need to know about money management is you need to have a plan. People who just live paycheck to paycheck don't usually look into the future. And I speak from experience because I didn't always used to look into the future. I also used to work with people who were like, I'm not gonna dream because I'm never gonna get there. Please don't have that outlook. Please don't have that mentality. Okay, let's go ahead and focus on the things that you can control. And that is, can you get a better job? Can you get a second job? How many jobs can you work, okay? So you need to start planning, start dreaming, dream big. It's always great to have a dream and to have a goal because it's what lights a fire under your rear end to accomplish a whole bunch of other things, okay? So always, always know how, that you need to have a goal. You need to have a plan for your money. For a long time, I never put money away into my retirement accounts because I was just barely scraping by and putting money into retirement wasn't a priority for me, but now it is. And I knew back when I couldn't put money into retirement that it was something that I wanted to do. I want to retire one day. I want to go travel and fish and explore with my husband one day and not have to work or worry about a job because I want to make sure that my retirement can accommodate all of that. So I knew that was a dream I had, even though I wasn't a contributing to it at the time. Have a goal because you need something to focus on and to work towards. All of my hard work, all of my busting my butt through grad school and my undergrad, it was all worth it because now I'm in a spot, I've got a full-time job, I work Monday through Friday, I've got, I live in a house, granted I did not buy this house, my husband had it before we met, but now I can afford to put money into retirement, we've paid off our cars, and all I'm working on is my student loans, but I had a goal. I knew what I wanted to achieve, and I knew that all of my fighting and clawing was going to pay off in the end. Okay, so have a money goal is what I recommend to you. Just because you're getting paid, say $15 an hour, you're not going to necessarily see that in your paycheck. And this is, let me explain what I mean about that. You have to have social security, Medicare, I believe, and federal income taxes or federal taxes taken out of your paycheck. And then depending on where you work, what state you live in, you are also going to have state taxes. Those are automatically deducted from your paycheck. So you lose already a percentage of your paycheck every paycheck. Regardless of the fact that you make $15 an hour, your paycheck won't necessarily reflect. You work eight hours, you get paid for $15 an hour, it, you're gonna have deductions from your paycheck, which is something you also need to consider. If you are a full-time employee, you also need to consider that insurance is going to be taken out of your paycheck as well. And if you are contributing to the retirement plan that your company has in place, that's gonna be deducted from your paycheck too. So you need to remember starting a new job, 15, 20, $25 an hour, all sounds really great. But remember, you're going to have things deducted from your paycheck, every paycheck that are, some of them are in your control. Really the only one that's super in your control is your retirement contributions. Sometimes you get an option as to whether or not you can, what plan you contribute to where health insurance is, is concerned. However, everything else is completely out of your control and you're required to pay in to the other things that I mentioned. So always remember when you see that dollar amount, when you accept a job, there are going to be things deducted. If you're someone like me who likes to break everything down and know what they can afford, as soon as I got 
this new job, or it's not a new job, I've had it for almost four years now. As soon as I got this job, I started breaking down what I was going to make every other week or every month and if I could cover my expenses, what leeway did I have, but I made one fatal mistake. I forgot to account for taxes. I forgot to account for, for social security. And it, my first paycheck kind of shocked me because I was like, no, I'm not supposed to be, I'm supposed to be getting more. I had to look back, look at my paycheck stub and I realized I didn't account for the deductions that were going to happen. So always make sure if you're someone like that who likes to plan ahead, don't forget that automatically things are gonna be deducted from your paycheck. That is because we are required to pay into them, okay? So please don't be shocked and don't forget that because that was also a bit of a learning curve when I started working was, oh shoot, I may be getting $13 an hour but my paycheck's smaller than I thought, even though I worked 40 hours in that week. Another thing that I want to talk about where money management is concerned, contribute to some sort of savings. And the earlier you get started saving, and if you start saving in the right way, you get your money into a high yield savings account, you get even if that's just to start off, you get your money into some sort of retirement, the earlier you start, the longer that money has to grow and it's gonna greatly benefit you later in life. Now, don't get me wrong. Like I said, I've already told you, I didn't contribute to retirement for a long time, but I did start saving for a long time. Once I started working and started making more money than my bills and my expenses, I was saving as much as I could. I was able to get cars paid down. This isn't my first car that I've owned. I was able to get cars paid down. I was able to pay for the things that I want, but I saved. I would save and save and save. That is a mentality you need to work on building. Saving doesn't always come naturally to people. Some people are natural savers. I know for a fact, not everybody is. And here's no shade to anybody, but even some of my siblings, saving didn't necessarily come naturally to them, and that's okay. They have learned it over time. Saving is something you have to be intentional with and have the forethought and the mindset to do so because most people don't instinctively go, oh, I have excess money, let's put it aside. Some people go, I have excess money, I can do whatever I want. And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes it's nice to live and splurge. But if you do it all the time, you're, you're always just gonna be at a even plane. You're never gonna be growing your, your net worth. You're never going to have extra cushion and extra money set aside in the event of an emergency. So you need to save, build that saving mentality and it is not always easy. There have been things that I have wanted and wanted and wanted. Sometimes I craved. 100% being honest, I caved, man. I was like, I want this, not waiting, and I went for it, depleted my savings, or I didn't even bother to save for it and just went for it. Sometimes it worked out okay, but sometimes it bit me in the rear end. So I would highly recommend building that saving mentality, whether it means you put $5 aside every paycheck, $10 aside, or if you have the wiggle room and you can put $200 aside every paycheck, whatever you can afford to put aside after you've taken care of your needed bills, like being able to feed yourself, transportation, place to live. If you can afford to put money aside, I highly encourage you to build that saving muscle as Dave Ramsey puts it. it it's, it's something you have to work and practice at, especially if you are not something, especially if you are not somebody who the saving bug doesn't happen naturally, okay? So I highly encourage you to learn how to save because saving can make or break certain things in life for you. If you are entering into adulthood, if you're moving out on your own, if you are now starting college, if you are now just starting life, knowing your money is absolutely crucial to you being able to do a lot of things in life. 
okay? And I'm not talking you need to make exuberance amount of money. Not everywhere requires you to have a six-figure income, okay? The state of Colorado, yeah, it, it, could I, I could totally live on the salary I make now. I do not make a six-figure salary. I could live on it. I wouldn't necessarily be thriving on it. However, now that I'm with my husband, we've got two incomes that helps substantially and that puts us in the six figure range because two incomes, we both make over $50,000. And I'm gonna leave it at that because I don't need people to know how much I make right now, but we both make over $50,000 a year. So that puts us into the $100,000 plus annually together okay so now it makes living here in Colorado where the cost of living is high now it's possible however there are places I believe like Arkansas um, Ohio there's another state and I can't remember which state it is but there are just to name a few and that's a Kentucky maybe where the cost of living is far lower where a whole family can live off of $60,000 a year, okay? So where you live is important. So I'm not saying that you need to go off and make hundreds of thousands of dollars to live, but what I'm saying is you need to know your money. You need to go out and be intentional with your money now that you are an adult and moving out into the world. You're starting, you're starting your adult life and it is scary, it is fun, and a lot of opportunities are now opening up to you. And if you are not money smart, it's gonna come back and bite you, okay? So that is why I chose money as the very first topic to talk about in this series, is because money can make or break. It can really determine a lot of things for you in the sense that if you are not, if you are not managing your money in a smart way, way and you're just living life willy-nilly and just throwing your money wherever things could get really difficult for you and I'm not saying don't live I'm not saying don't be adventurous and go out and just be willy-nilly just have some intent where your money is concerned because time and time again I've been on this end where I've just when I first started making money I was just kind of spending because I had money. I learned pretty quickly if I do that, I was gonna run into problems later, okay? So I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking from people I have worked with. I'm speaking from my family. It's a well-rounded conversation I've had with people for me to know that knowing how to handle your money is absolutely crucial to your life and the way that you're going to live it, okay? So hopefully this was informative. Hopefully this will help guide you. I will link in the description below resources that I like. I can link some articles for you about why knowing at least how to manage your money is important, the importance of savings, the importance of budgeting. If you that's something you are interested in, I can link it, um, but my goal here is to inform. This is meant to be educational and to help you out and guide you, okay? So hopefully you enjoyed this and there is more life skills topics to help you live and grow in this newfound freedom that you have. So if you liked this, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing and I will see you guys next time. We are having a chit chat we're in the kitchen or we're in my garden cooking and being overwhelmed. So I'll see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye.